on my mind, my heart tonight, so we uh, decided we was going to do that. Yeah, All right, we're going to go ahead and go into the message tonight. I'm going to have to reset everything just a little bit, and as uh, Sister Miller goes back and gets the cameras to go on, get them up on the wall right quick. Again tonight, I do appreciate everybody that uh, tunes in and listens to the messages as we go forward. Hopefully, we'll be getting some good news this week that uh, Illinois will start opening back up gradually, and we can eventually get back into the house of God. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm really missing the people not being able to be here with us. But yet, on the other hand, we've got to be smart about this too. We don't need people dying of afflictions and things like this. But even when we do get back into the church with common sense, all of us need to realize that if we're sick and got runny noses and coughs, we need to stay at home at that particular time until after we're sure of what's going on and uh, so forth. But it's gonna change the way things are done in some areas, but yet we're still gonna be, I think, safer once this is all over with and once we see God's mighty hand move in this. And today, this afternoon, as I begin contemplating on scripture, praying, seeking God's face, that I begin thinking about who he is and how powerful that God really is. And he created heaven and earth. And we can't even imagine how powerful that he is. Praise the Lord. I can't imagine in myself. He spoke the world into existence. Praise God. Spoke everything into existence that is up on the earth today. Now I'm going to start out tonight in Revelation 1 and 8. Let us pray first before we go into this. Heavenly Father, again this night we approach the throne of grace and of mercy. We honor and glorify your name. 
I'm praying tonight, Lord, that you would touch my mind and anoint me with the Spirit of God and that I might be able to bring this word out to touch hearts and souls of people, to lift them up and strengthen them in this time of need. I'm praying today, Lord, again for those sick and afflicted and praising you, Lord, for those, blessed Jesus, that have been saved and received you into their life and heart today. Ask you today, Lord, to move up on those that, that today that are in the highways and byways and are lost and miserable in the day that we live in. Help us some way and some how to be able to reach out to them and draw them in or let them realize how great it is to be able to be a child of the king and serving you and walking in your pathway and following you and all we do in this life. Now continue to bless us, Lord, to bless all those that are listening to this tonight. And we'll honor you and we'll praise you and we'll ask it in Jesus' name tonight. I'm first tonight going to go over to Revelation chapter 1, down to about verse 8. It talks about who God is. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, or Omega, the beginning and the ending. In other words, he's the beginning of my life. He's going to be the ending of my life. He's the beginning of this earth. He's the ending of this earth. Praise God. As long as I have him within me, praise the Lord, at the ending of my life, I'll still be okay. He said, now let me read that again from the beginning. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Praise God. There's no one greater than what he is. And the ninth verse says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Now, when we stop and listen to what that word I just spoke said, it said companion in tribulation. So there's going to be some tribulation take place. It said companion in tribulation, but it said and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. We have to realize it takes a lot of patience to be able to go forward living for the Lord. And it said was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Actually, John was put out on the isle of Patmos uh, basically to die. In the Isle of Patmos, they had a mine going on out there, and most people uh, in that particular uh, place were uh, miners, and that's how that, uh, they were slaves uh, undo it. And he was a slave, and he was doing this, but he said, I was put out on the Isle of Pat Patmos for the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. He wasn't looking at the punishment uh, that mankind was trying to put up on him, uh, but he was believing in God. And Revelation 1 and 10 said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. Even though he was out there, even though they put him there to die, he was still in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard me a voice, great voice, as of a trumpet. Hallelujah. He heard a voice behind him. Praise God. And again, I'm going to go to uh, chapter 1 and 11. It said, and saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the last, or the ending. And what you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are, are also in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. These were seven churches that this was all being sent out to. And when he seen this and heard this, all of a sudden it uh, talked to us about what happened to him. He said, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Amen. In other words, he would, had called him and lifted him up and strengthened him within his power and his might. Revelation 1 and 18 says that I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. This is Christ. Praise the Lord that died on Calvary, went into the underworld departments and took away the keys of, of, of death and hell away from Satan and brought forth life out of the grave when he was resurrected. That 19 verse says, right the thing which you have seen, uh, and the thing which you are, and the thing which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars. Now, I'm going to talk about in Revelation 1 and 20, about the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in the right hand of the seven golden candlesticks. The stars are the angels of the churches. I believe that God has an angel watching over every one of us. Praise God. And the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. Praise the Lord. So 
I'm going to go into the seven churches tonight and talk about the seven churches. Every church had problems. Every church had needs. And the Lord was ministering here through John to allow the churches to realize what was needing to take place. Do you suppose that we've been having some needs in the churches uh, across the world today and all of a sudden everything got sh shaken up? Uh, uh, praise the Lord. And uh, we've not been able to go on with things like they once were. Uh, we've not been able to get her in the house of God together. Uh, maybe the Lord trying to tell us uh, uh, some of the things that may be wrong with the church today. Maybe we need uh, uh, to reach out in a different direction. One thing for sure, this is uh, it's caused us to come to a point that we're using uh, uh, the media more than we've ever used it before. Technology uh, is beginning to play a great part uh, in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know about a lot of the pastors, but back a few years ago, uh, I would never have been doing what I'm doing tonight. Uh, I wouldn't have been live streaming on Facebook. I wouldn't have been uh, live streaming on YouTube. Uh, uh, but today I'm reaching out to people with the only avenues uh, that we have. Maybe God tells us tonight it's all right. Uh, to be able to uh, take on new avenues. This technology is good. Take it and use it for my glory and for my honor. Uh, I believe it's what the Lord is telling us uh, uh, tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, so yes, we're learning. Pastors are learning what, like we have never learned before uh, about how to reach out uh, beyond uh, the church walls uh, in a time like this. Uh, now I want to go into the church of Ephesus tonight. It says, under the angel of the church of Ephesus right these things say of he that holds the seven stars uh, in his hand uh, and who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Uh, walking in the midst of the churches, in other words. Uh, he said, I know your works, praise God, and your labor and your patience, uh, praise the Lord. Now, if he knows their works, he knew what was being done. And if he knew their labor, he knew those among them uh, that were actually doing their jobs. Uh, and your patience, uh, being patient uh, in God is one of the hardest things for some of to do uh, that there is. Uh, and it went on to say, and how you cannot bear them which are evil, uh, uh, praise the Lord. And you have uh, tried them which say they are apostles uh, and are not and have found them uh, liars. In other words, those that are false prophets, uh, uh, they didn't say good to those, uh, uh, praise the Lord. They kept them at an arm's link, uh, uh, praise the Lord. They wouldn't allow them to enter in uh, into the churches or tear their churches down, uh, uh, praise the Lord. Going on with it and have born and have patience uh, and for my name's sake have labored uh, and have not fainted. Uh, well, praise God, they were working hard. Uh, they had the enemies coming against them from uh, every direction. They worked hard but they did not faint. Uh, they kept themselves up strong within the Lord uh, as they spoke to this. Uh, it said that now this next word, we need to take notice when it begins to say, nevertheless, because when it says something like that, you need to open your ears up uh, and find out what nevertheless means. Uh, it said, I have somewhat against you. Well, here it is. Uh, uh, praise God. Even though that they were doing a lot of things right, uh, there was something that was wrong. Uh, he said, you have left uh, your first love. In other words, they had fallen a little bit away from the spiritual strength of God uh, and allowed their own uh, strength to begin to lead them and guide them uh, uh, within their walk. Uh, the first love was something that they needed to come back to and get it reunited uh, within their lives. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Nevertheless, I have someone that just want to get you because you have left that first love. Going on to the Revelation 2 and 5 says, Remember therefore from where you are fallen. Amen. Remember where you once were. Remember how you were when you first got saved and how the zeal was in your heart and your soul and how you reached out and allowed the Lord to work with you and you run repeatedly uh, uh, forward instead of going backwards. Uh, said, remember therefore from where you have fallen and repent. Uh, now here it is uh, uh, calling us to repentance. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I, I do something. I preach a word uh, uh, all the time saying that we need to be living uh, a life of repentance. Uh, and I've had something to say, well, Brother Miller, don't you uh, uh, think that we uh, uh, have repented and we don't have to repent every day of our life if we live a life of repentance? Uh, uh, praise God. We're not going to allow sin 
sin to get in our lives. Uh, therefore, we need to do it on a daily basis. Uh, and it says, do the first work uh, or else I will come unto you quickly. Uh, go back and do it over again. Don't let your flesh overwhelm you. Uh, don't allow the Spirit of God to die out in your heart uh, and within your soul. Uh, and he said, and we'll remove your candlestick uh, out of his place, praise God, except you repent. Uh, in other words, he'll remove the Spirit of God out of our heart uh, and out of our soul. Uh, but he also said, you have uh, uh, that uh, which you hate, uh, the deed to the Nicolaitan, which I also hate. So he's saying there's still some things you're doing right. Uh, you're not going to allow these false prophets to come in uh, to the church. You're not going to allow them uh, to overcome uh, uh, the people uh, in the church, praise God, but you're going to hold them uh, outside, uh, praise God. You're going to teach and preach against the things that they're trying uh, to establish as false prophets. It said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Have an ear. Listen to it. Understand what he's saying, praise God. Stay caught up in the Spirit. Uh, live a repentant life. Walk and talk and breathe uh, and talk in the Lord. Don't allow uh, a sin uh, uh, to be uh, able to breed itself into your life and into your heart and soul. Don't allow the lust uh, of our eyes or the lust of our heart uh, uh, to overcome us and draw us back uh, into the world. Uh, hallelujah. But allow the Spirit of God uh, to lift us up and continue to lead us and guide us. Uh, and then when the enemy he shows up, uh, we're going to have the power to withstand him uh, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Uh, in Revelation 2 and 8, uh, it's talking about the, the church of Smyrna. It talks about that, and under the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, uh, says the first uh, and the last, which was dead and is alive. Uh, the Lord is wanting them to realize uh, that there was nobody before him, uh, and there's not going to be anybody after him. Uh, hallelujah. He was dead uh, he, because he became the perfect sacrifice for you and I but he took his life back and he lived today. Uh, that next verse says I know your work and tribulation uh, and poverty. Uh, uh, praise God. He brings something out here. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, talking about poverty. Uh, but then he turned around and said but you are rich uh, and I know the blasphemy of them uh, which say they are Jews and are not uh, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Uh, they were rich because they knew who they were. Uh, they were rich because uh, they were living for the Lord at this time. He said, fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Amen. So he's telling them, you're going to have some things you're going to suffer with, but don't fear them. Don't let them get you down. Just trust in me, and I'll bring you to where that you need to go. He said, behold, a devil will cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Now, I don't know whether this literally means that they're going to be cast into prison for ten days, or Render it uh, just telling us uh, that there's going to be time that uh, we're going to be cast in uh, to prison. And Satan is going to come against us. But he said, Be faithful unto death, uh, and I will give you a crown of life. Wow. We've got to realize, serving God, there may be a time that we have to serve Him and go through such a trial and such a tribulation that it'll even take our life. But if we do, then we're called back up to God from where we came. Revelation 2 and 11 says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Again, let us hear what the Spirit is saying unto us today. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. In other words, we'll not be cast into hell because we have overcome this. Praise the Lord. I'm bringing messages out, or message out tonight on the churches. I believe that the day that we're living, the church needs to realize and understand that we're not perfect either today. There's a lot of things that we could do differently than what we're doing. There could be a lot more outreach in our hearts and our souls uh, unto the lost and unsaved. Uh, there could be a lot more strength uh, in our walk with God. There could be a lot more liberty uh, within us. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, and we can come together and even though we're battling hard uh, and uh, the enemies come against us, uh, we can gather around each other and begin to pray uh, and God can move upon us and give us the strength that we have uh, a need of to do battle and overcome and have victory in our lives. Now I want to talk to you a little while about the church of Pergamos. 
It said in the angel, to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, these things saith he which has a sharp sword with two edges. Two edges. That has a significance. Two edges cuts up and it cuts down. It's sharp on both sides. Praise God. Hallelujah. So to remember there's times that the sword may cut either way into our heart and our soul. The enemy could come against us with such a sword if we're not careful. It says, I know your works and where you dwell, even where Satan's seed is. He knew their works. He knew what they were doing. He knew, praise God, even where Satan was at. And he said, you hold fast my name and have not denied my faith. Even in those days were in Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwells. Now let me tell you, even though that they were uh, had a martyr uh, killed amongst them, it didn't stop them, it didn't slow them down. Uh, if anything, it just uh, uh, gave them more uh, strength and more faith in God, and they continued going forward. Uh, this church uh, had some strength within it. Uh, but then he said, but I have a, a few things against you. Even though it had some power, even though it had some strength, uh, even though it survived uh, uh, one being martyred in the midst of us, uh, he said, I still have a you things against you because you uh, have them there uh, that hold the doctrine of Balaam uh, who taught Balak uh, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols uh, and to commit fornication. Uh, in other words they allowed this to happen. They were uh, uh, allowing them to come amongst them uh, and do these things. Uh, he said even though you have some power even though you had one martyred uh, for my glory as what God is saying. Uh, yet you're doing some things that's not right. Are we doing some things uh, that's not right in the churches nowadays? Are we hearing God as he's speaking to us? What would the Lord tell me tonight, uh, praise God, uh, if he looked down on me uh, and began to talk to me about honeycomb church of God? Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know exactly what he would say to me right now, uh, but uh, he could find some things wrong uh, with the way that things have been going. Uh, Lord, if there's things wrong, show us what they are that we might be able to overcome them uh, and that we might be able to defeat the enemy. Uh, he says, so have you also them that hold the doctrine uh, of the Nicolaitans, uh, of which I hate. Uh, it was a doctrine, uh, uh, praise God, uh, that was sour to the core. It was a false doctrine, a uh, uh, praise God. Uh, and he told them, uh, 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 you've allowed these two doctrines to come in uh, uh, to the midst of your uh, uh, church. He said, repent, uh, or else I will come unto you quickly, uh, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Uh, uh, praise God. God. Uh, hallelujah. There may be some things that we need to be getting uh, uh, removed uh, out of the midst of us. So you might say, Brother Miller, uh, uh, what are you preaching about tonight? Uh, uh, praise God. Are there things going on in the churches uh, that shouldn't be? I don't know. That's a question to ask uh, uh, you uh, as church people tonight. Are there things uh, uh, going on that shouldn't be? Uh, is there something that needs to be uh, uh, cleaned up in the church? Uh, do we need to have more power? Do we need to have more uh, strength within the church? Uh, I pray God. Do we need to teach the word of God more powerful to stand up on the foundation uh, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Uh, I do pray God. Are there teachings uh, that we need to get uh, away from the church? Uh, think about what I'm saying tonight. Uh, but the Bible again, uh, I said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Uh, to him that overcomes. Uh, will I give to eat uh, the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, uh, and in the white stone a new name written, uh, which no man knows, uh, save he that receives it. Uh, amen. Uh, praise God. I want a, one of those stones. Praise God. I want a new name uh, uh, written uh, by the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. Uh, Lord, help us tonight. Help us to rise up uh, in these last days. Help us to be established uh, and preach and teach uh, your word uh, and allow your spirit to direct our pathways. Uh, uh, Lord, if there's things uh, that we have allowed in the house of God that shouldn't be uh, in the midst of us, uh, uh, speak it to our hearts and our souls. Uh, Lord, uh, I repent of anything uh, 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 such, uh, uh, like this that would come into the church. Uh, I ask you, Lord, uh, uh, forgive us and lift us up above these things uh, and bring your anointing upon us. Uh, 
in a greed and a powerful fervor uh, that would bring revival like we have never seen uh, in the history of the church. Uh, uh, praise God. I'm praying, Lord. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Uh, when this uh, uh, thing gets over with, this impact uh, of the world, uh, that we'll see one of the greatest uh, Holy Ghost filled revivals. Uh, hallelujah. That this church world has ever seen to shake us. Uh, uh, glory to God. To lift us. Uh, to anoint us. Uh, and to draw the unchained into the house of God by the groves. Uh, to see them saved. Sanctified. Build a baptism of the Spirit of God. Now I'm going to go to the church of Thyatira. Now I'm talking about these churches, but now I'm also relating this back to us. There are some pastors that would say, well, these churches uh, uh, talk about uh, time spans and things like this. Uh, well, listen, they may do that also, but one thing for sure, uh, it talks about things that are wrong in these churches. Uh, and I'm telling you, there's things that we need to get straightened down in our churches today. Uh, I know that I'm not a popular uh, a pastor right now preaching the way I'm preaching, uh, but we need to get things uh, in line down, uh, get ourselves in the Spirit of God, uh, repent for the things that we have done wrong in time past uh, and allow God to become head of the church. Amen. And unto the angel of the church and thy time are right, these things saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Amen. There's no one like him. I know your works. Again, he's talking to him about I know your works. God knows what we're doing. And he said, and charity Praise God, in service and faith uh, and your patience uh, and in your works uh, and the last to be more than the first. Hallelujah. I want you to know uh, we need to be working for the Lord, uh, but we also need, uh, glory to God, to be moved uh, under the anointing of His power and His Spirit uh, uh, through His Word. Uh, and to now, uh, with, uh, withstanding, uh, I have a few things against you. Here we go again. Another church, another problem. Another thing God wasn't pleased with. Because you suffer that woman Jezebel, which has called herself a prophetess, uh, to teach and seduce my servants, uh, to commit fornication, uh, and to eat things sacrificed uh, unto idols. Uh, uh, praise God. Here again, false prophets uh, in the midst of them, uh, uh, not doing anything about it. Uh, and they were serving God, maybe, uh, but they weren't doing anything uh, about the false teaching that was going on in a lot of their people uh, and were being drawn away uh, by the falsehood uh, of Jezebel. Uh, it said, I gave her space to repent uh, of her fornication, uh, and she repented not. Uh, in other words, I would have saved her, uh, uh, praise God, if she would have come away uh, uh, from this, uh, uh, praise God. But she would not repent, uh, hallelujah, and he would not uh, allow her to go uh, uh, forward in this. It said, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, uh, and them that commit adultery with her in the great tribulation, uh, except they repent uh, of their deed. Uh, God is going to hold uh, uh, the church is responsible uh, for the things that they do. Hallelujah. I guess I might be preaching a hellfire brimstone message in a way tonight talking about uh, the churches getting themselves uh, right with God. Uh, uh, not just the, uh, the people I'm talking about. Pastors getting right uh, within God. Uh, the, the, the people of the church getting right with God. Uh, hallelujah. Reaching out to the community with the fiery uh, the power of light uh, to the Holy Ghost that would draw people in uh, because that they're feeling uh, God's spirit and God's strength coming forward. Uh, it said, and I will kill her children with death, uh, and all the churches shall know that I am he uh, which serves the reign uh, at heart. Uh, if you think sin is going to be allowed uh, to go on continually uh, in the house of God, uh, I've got news for you. He said he would kill even her children. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. And he would... He'll keep his word. He said, I know uh, I am he with churches of reigns and hearts, and I will give it to every one of you according uh, to your work. Hallelujah. That ought to wake us up tonight. How's our work going? Uh, how are we uh, uh, doing for the Lord tonight? Uh, are our work going to burn? Uh, praise God. Or is our work uh, going to hold up in Jesus Christ uh, to the anointing of the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Revelation 2 and 24 said, But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, uh, I will put up on you none of the burden. In other words, you've kept yourself from it, and I'm not going to put anything else up on you. But that which you have already 
Hold fast till I come. The power that God has given them. They have stood. They have stood steadfast. They've not failed. And he said, I'm going to keep you. Praise God. Revelation 2 and 26 then says that he that overcomes and keep my word unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Amen. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as a vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I've received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. That he has let he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now to the church, the angel of the church in Sire Tyrus write. These things say he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Again, he's talking about, I know your work. Don't you believe he knows our works today? Don't you believe he knows what's in our hearts and within our soul today? How much closer do we need to be unto the Lord today? That would be my question. Hallelujah. He said, these things say he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you live and are dead. Amen. In other words, they're putting on a good show. It looks like that they're really doing what they need to be, but yet they're dead. They have no power within them. They have no strength because they're walking in the flesh rather than in the Spirit of God. He said, then be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. In other words, there's a few things in you that remain. The teaching's still there. You know better than where you are. Strengthen those things that are ready to die. Don't let them die. Get them strengthened. Get yourself strengthened in the power and spirit of the Holy Ghost. Get on your knees and cry out to God and get ready. And don't let the things of God die in your life. It said, for I have not found your work perfect before God. Amen. How much of our lives, how many times in my life uh, as an individual would God find fault with? Uh, I praise the Lord. Man has no uh, need of trying to find fault in us. Uh, I'm not trying to find fault in other people, uh, but God knows who we are tonight. Uh, he knows every need in our heart and our soul. Uh, he knows why that we're, do we do the things that we do. Uh, he knows that if we're singing the gospel for his glory, uh, whether we're doing it, uh, I praise God for somebody to see us and hear us, uh, or whether we're doing it to glorify his name. Uh, and when we're glorifying his name, the Spirit begins to fall uh, and he begins to bless us. Uh, I don't care how good a singer that you are. Uh, if you're singing in the flesh uh, uh, to want people to uh, respect you for who you are, uh, you're singing for the wrong reason. Uh, you need uh, to allow God to touch you uh, and begin to sing and praise him. Uh, it doesn't matter what man uh, around us is doing. Uh, it said, remember therefore how you have received uh, and heard uh, and hold fast and repent. Uh, if there Therefore, uh, you shall not watch. Uh, I will come as a thief, uh, and you shall not know uh, what hour I will come up on you. I uh, uh, pray you God, get ready. Uh, get ready. That's what he's saying. Get ready, because I'm going to be coming back at a time uh, when you're not even expecting me. Be ready. Uh, be serving me. Uh, uh, let your heart be filled with my strength and my spirit. Uh, Revelation 3 and 4 says, uh, You have a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled uh, their garments. Uh, they shall walk with me in white. Uh, for they are worthy. They're going to be saints of God walking with him. Uh, they uh, didn't fail. I uh, pray God, but they walk uh, through all the way, all the tribulations and everything that was around them. Uh, they never laid down uh, their uh, work for God. They continued doing uh, the things that he had laid in their lives and upon their hearts, uh, even though the enemy had attacked them in many directions, uh, in many ways. Uh, he said, he that overcomes the saints shall be clothed in white raiment. Uh, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, uh, but I will confess his name before my father uh, and before his angels uh, dressed in white raiment. Uh, only, a, a, a praise God, only uh, the saints of God are dressed in white raiment. Uh, a praise God, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, those that hold on, we're going to be the saints of God. Revelation 3 and 6 that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I believe God talking uh, tonight to us as churches. Uh, I'm not talking about church of God. I'm talking about churches in general. Uh, all of us need to examine where we are uh, and how we're conducting ourselves uh, in the Lord. Uh, praise God. Now I'm going to talk about uh, a church and uh, most people think uh, was all right uh, and they couldn't find much wrong with this church. But yet the Lord did find something wrong with it. Uh, it said it was the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? 
these things say of he that is holy, uh, he that is true, uh, he that has the key of David, uh, he that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. Uh, praise God. In other words, uh, he's got the authority to do anything uh, he so desires. It says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, uh, and no man can shut it, uh, for you have a little strength. Uh, there's the fault right here. It said, for you have a little strength. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. That church should have had a lot of strength uh, in God, but they had uh, a little strength uh, and have kept my word uh, and have not denied my name. They did not deny him, uh, but yet they needed to have more strength. Uh, I've had many preachers and teachers uh, uh, tell me, uh, uh, praise God, the Philadelphia church was a perfect church. Uh, well, it wasn't perfect. It needed to have more strength in God. It said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Praise God. In other words, they turned away those that were false prophets. They turned away those that were teaching things contrary to the word of God, and the Lord was going to bless them because they did do this. Praise the Lord. Uh, Revelation 3 and 10 said, Because you have kept the word of my patience, uh, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation. Uh, now, the hour of temptation, uh, we find out in the Old Testament, it's uh, Jacob, the hour of Jacob trouble, uh, uh, hallelujah, which shall come upon all the world uh, and deprive them that dwell uh, upon the earth. Hallelujah. There's a time coming that we'll be caught up uh, to the Lord, praise God, when he returns again. Because of the you behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have, that no man take your crown. Amen. If you're a child of God, hang on to it. If you're a child of God and you know you're a child of God, you're living for him, you're walking for him, you're talking for him, praise God, you're defeating the enemy through him. Praise the Lord. Hang on to it because he's going to reward you. Said so he that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Amen. And again, it says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now I've got one more church. That I'm going to bring out tonight. And I, I brought this out not too long ago on the but I'm bringing it different tonight than I ever had. Revelation 3 and 14 talks about the church of the Laodiceans. And it says, Under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your work. Every time he says this, I know your work, that you are neither cold or hot. I would you were cold or hot. They weren't on fire for God. They hadn't backslid, but they were lukewarm. He said, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Amen. Now, I always kind of think about a cup of coffee when I think about spewing them out of my mouth. I like hot coffee. I like warm coffee. But when that coffee gets cold, uh, I want to spew it out of my mouth. I don't want anything to do with it at that time. Now, I believe that's the way that he feels uh, about people that will not go ahead and commit to him, will not allow him to use them uh, uh, in his hand and in his ministry to defeat the enemy. So because you say, I am rich and increased with good uh, and have need of nothing and no, not you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Isn't that kind of like the United States of America and most people in America? We have been spoiled. We've had just about anything and everything that we wanted. Do you think sometimes uh, that we sit back in the seat of do nothing because we don't uh, have any needs and God is uh, uh, going to compare us uh, to this lukewarm church if we're not careful? Uh, uh, God said uh, with them that they think that they are rich uh, but they're poor. Praise God. Uh, I I want to be rich in the uh, power of the Spirit of God. I want to be rich in His Word. Uh, I don't want to be rich in comfort. Uh, I pray God in the things of this life until I lose sight of who God is. It said, I counsel you to buy of me gold, uh, try in the fire. Gold cried in the fire is as pure as gold that there could be. That you may be rich and white raiment, that you may be clothed. 
Talking about saints again, praise God. That the shame of your nakedness do not show and do not appear. And anoint your eyes, anoint your eye for the spirit, in other words, with eye said that you may see, praise God, that you may understand, that you might know the power and strength and the zeal that you need to have. Revelation 3 and 19 says that many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Because, be zealous, therefore, and repent. I was preaching about chastisement this morning. I want you to understand sometimes the Lord's going to chastise us. Sometimes he's going to show us some things that we're doing wrong and some things that need to be straightened out. And he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear me, we have to be listening. We have to be wanting to hear him. So if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. The Lord therefore, he's willing to come into us at any time. We have to receive him. We have to invite him in to our life, our heart, and our soul. So to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Amen. He give us an invitation. He give us an invitation to serve him. He gives us an invitation to reject evil, reject those that, that are false witnesses and false prophets, those that are going against his word. And he's given us an invitation to come uh, and join him, uh, praise God, in the Father's house. Revelation 3 and 22 says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says uh, unto the churches. Uh, well, hallelujah. I want you to know the Spirit uh, was talking to these churches uh, pretty heavily uh, as I've read through this tonight. But uh, also I want you to realize that if there's anything in our lives uh, that these uh, scriptures would minister to, we may be needing to do some things differently uh, than what we've done in the past. Uh, uh, praise God. I know, uh, uh, praise the Lord, that there's going to be uh, changes take place in churches across this nation and across the world uh, after we get back into the church houses. Uh, but one thing I want to see more than anything else uh, is people being revived uh, in the Spirit of God. Us coming together uh, in His anointing. Uh, us coming together serving Him and magnifying Him. Uh, when we get up and praise Him, uh, let's praise Him to the depth of our heart. Uh, and when we sing a song, let's sing it for His glory uh, and for his honor. Uh, and when we're playing musical instruments, uh, uh, let's pray uh, with all of our might, uh, anointed by the power of the Spirit of God. Uh, uh, let's uh, uh, come together in the house of God and worship like we have never uh, uh, worshipped before. Uh, let's come together, praise God, uh, and allow uh, the Spirit of God to lead us and guide us uh, uh, to come together uh, as a family of God uh, and not just in this house allow the Spirit uh, uh, to escape these walls and go out uh, into the community uh, and touch other lives and other heart and other soul uh, and draw them in uh, seeing them saved and sanctified and filled uh, with the powerful spirit of God uh, tonight we love you uh, we lift you up before the Lord uh, I'm praising you and honoring and glorifying the churches uh, across this world today but let's stand up and be the warriors of God let's stand through trials and tribulations in him Let's allow him to take hold of us, uh, uh, praise God, and lead us to the places that we need to go. But if we have things in our hearts or in our lives that we need to turn loose of, uh, let's pray about this. Let's get it out of our life and out of our heart. If our churches are failing God in any way, we need to pray about this. We need to overcome uh, the things that would cause us to be failing. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I, I read in uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the blessings and the curses uh, of uh, God's children. Uh, hallelujah. Most all the curses come upon us because uh, we have not obeyed the Lord uh, in the ways that we should have. Uh, uh, God, today, help us to see uh, who you are. Uh, help us to understand that we're nothing without you. Uh, and Lord, really let us understand that we're servants in your hand. Uh, I like the way uh, Apostle Paul had said it so many times uh, that he is a slave uh, under the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, God, help us uh, to be your servants. Uh, help us to understand and hear and know wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Uh, help us not to rise up uh, uh, thinking ourselves to be anything but Lord let us receive uh, the anointing the power from heaven uh, uh, coming down uh, that will deliver hearts and souls and people's lives. Uh, and restore us, uh, heal us, uh, and make us whole. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you honor and glory. One thing I'm realizing tonight, I'm preaching a lot longer in messages than I even was when we were having church services. And I'm 
not really sure whether I ought to be doing this while church service is going on. Maybe I've been failing God and I'm going ahead and finishing the messages that I need to really be reaching out with tonight. There's always room for improvement in any church. And if you don't think there is, you need to talk to the Lord about it. Because I'm sure he can show us some things that need to be straightened out. And I'm ready to work on them. How about you? Are you ready to work on them? Church members, are you ready to work on getting our church to where that it needs to be? I love him. I praise him. I honor him. I glorify him. I lift his name up. Praise the Lord with all of my heart tonight. Now let me pray with you tonight. And let's pray together. Pray for yourself tonight as I pray. I'm going to pray for myself. I'm going to pray for our church tonight. But let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I approach the throne of grace and of mercy again this night. And Lord, if there's things in my life or in my heart that need to change and be done differently than what I'm doing, I'm praying, Lord, that you would bring them to my attention that I might be able to lay them down. Lord, I'm praying to be in the center of your will. I want you to, Lord, to take me, blessed Savior, and allow me to feel your strength and your anointing upon me to a point that there's things that I've done wrong and you bring conviction within me. And then, Lord, you lay a plan out before me that I might be able to overcome these things. Uh, you talked to every one of the churches and things that they were doing wrong. You told them, each one, that they had some strengths within them, but they weren't the, as strong as they needed to be. God, if I'm failing you in any way as a pastor, if we're failing you in any way as a church, I pray that you help us to overcome and be established strongly and firmly within you and within your word. And Lord, most of all, that every one of us become servants in your hand. Lord, that we might serve you. The things that we're doing will give you honor and give you glory as we go forward in this life. So I'm asking this day, Lord, to bless all the people tonight that listen to me. Bless all the churches tonight, Lord, and help us become one together in your kingdom and in your strength. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you honor. We'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.